Right guys, hello, another video for you. Wind Wings Orion 2 Throttle. I've had it well over a year now. I wanted to do a video to share my thoughts on it and answer frequently asked questions people have, those of you considering getting one. So I should point out, this is the Orion 2 base and I have the F-18 replica grips because that's what we could order uh, back then. But we've now got the F-15E or EX grips which have rumble motors inside the grips and EX, think of it as extra because there's extra inputs. You can never have too many buttons or switches on a HOTAS, that's why we get them. So many of you will be looking to get the F-15, it'll be a bit more versatile, uh, but the base will be the same, build quality should be the same. Hopefully this video helps you guys out. We'll put uh, timestamps to help you find your way around the video. So we'll start with, I absolutely love the thing. I've got lots of use out of it. It has really helped me in the games and simulators that I play to enjoy them more. I did want a split throttle. We can divide it. There's a little latch there so you can lock them together. Uh, but if you do Microsoft Flight Simulator, you, know, you might fly a Cessna, so you need to adjust your, your prop speed, the propellers, as well as the engine RPMs. But in DCS, you might have like the F-14 Tomcat that has two engines, so you can control them independently. So I was able to do that. I placed Star Wars Squadrons, Elite Dangerous, all of these games to get lots of enjoyment having these extra buttons and switches available. So what I will say, those of you that are considering it, it is not really ideal to have it just plonked on the desk in front of you. Two reasons really. One, people will say about the switches at the front, once you've got the throttles fully forward, they're kind of obscured. That's a valid comment. It really comes down to the finger grips. When you've got it in front of you on the desk, you're having to reach up and over to get that grip to pull it back to get it off that detent, which is incredibly awkward. So yeah, if you have to have it on a desk, probably best not to bother with the finger lift kit. But ideally you want it mounted on a desk mount to get it down to your side. If not a desk mount, buy a cheap bedside table or something from Ikea or a thrift store to get it to the side of your chair and have it mounted as a fighter pilot would to the side. Because once it's at your side and below you, it's easy to get to the finger lifts and manipulate the switches. Another thing we'll mention that's just a quality of life improvement to do is to look at a USB-C, uh, well, USB hub that's powered but has buttons to turn the devices off. So there's certain games, mention no names, Elden Ring, so from software, uh, their games just have a hissy fit if you've got any other controllers connected other than the gamepad. So you'll be able to turn your flight or driving stuff off just by pushing the buttons on the USB hub rather than pulling out a USB cable. You don't have to buy that, but it, it can make your life easier. That's not Win Wing's fault, and that's down to other developers and their games. So the other thing that I'll mention straight away is, whilst we're talking about games, that many of them have a 32 button input limit. Now that's not Win Wing's fault, but to get around it, they've done what's called a four by 32 button mode in their SIMAP Pro software you can download on the website. So I suggest that you enable that straight away. The only time you need to turn it off is to update the firmware of the base or the grips. But other than that, just leave it set on. So DCS World, which is a simulator, digital combat simulator, that would recognize all the buttons and the switches that we have without the 32 button mode. But the problem is you'd set that up, then do the 32 button mode, and then DCS is confused because it went from one device to being four virtual devices. Think of the top of the base as one controller, the bottom of the base and these switches are another controller and each grip becomes its own controller. So you'd have to rebind DCS. So much easier, just do the 32 button mode straight away and then all your other games like Elite Dangerous or whatever, they'll have no issues whatsoever recognizing all your buttons and switches. So let's work through it logically. We'll start with the base. Uh, it is labeled the buttons and switches and they are actually backlit. I haven't got it plugged in, but these would all light up green when it's plugged in which is kind of cool. I like that they're labeled. To be fair, we've got F-16, A-10, F-15. F it's trying to cover a lot of aircraft, so not all of these functions would necessarily correlate to the, the aircraft that you're flying, but more often than not, you can sort of get the gist of what it's for and work it to, uh, to be whatever you're doing. So we've got air to ground, air to air buttons there. These are for the F-18. But when I do Elite Dangerous, I think, well, air to air, well, I've got a cargo scoop and air to ground I could have as, you know, landing gear or whatever. You can you can do what you want. Matt, these, just because they're labeled doesn't mean that you have to do what they're labeled for. You can bind them 
to whatever you like. You see we've got these two big sliders here. So they are mapped as an axis by default, but you can change it in the CIMAP Pro software to be button pushes as well. So in DCS, most people would say have this as a zoom. So you just gradually move it as an axis, so it's zoom, 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 zoom. And unless you do DCS in VR, and then it won't let you do zoom with an axis, it wants it to be a button press for VR. So I have the center position as VR zoom, and then fully forward is another button push, which is called spyglass zoom, which is super zoomed in. And I can just go back to normal zoom, and then the default view by moving it back. So yeah, if you fly the Harrier, you might want to adjust your nozzles for vertical takeoff or landing. You can use these axis sliders for that, it's up to you. Now, people say when you've got them configured like that, it's blocking the encoder dial. I can still use it and I can feel these in VR, even though not it's not really muscle memory, you can just feel them. That's got a button push. So it says HMD for head mounted display. So in DCS mini aircraft, you could adjust the brightness of its HUD. So you're looking around and then push that to turn the head mounted display on or off. But you might be doing another game in VR and you could just bind that to recenter your VR view. It's up to you. Get lots and lots of uses out of it. So no, I don't have an issue with it blocking the encoder. Found lots of uses for these sliders. You know, everything works incredibly well. So we've got the switches at the front, which you can see can get kind of obscured when we're in like the full throttle position. But to their credit, retract, extend the launch bar. So that's to do with aircraft carriers when you're hooking up to your catapult. There's your arrestor hook. That's when you're landing on a carrier. You put a hook out to catch the cable to stop you. And the wing fold. So this is not stuff you're really going to be using when you're flying and got full throttle activated. Uh, we've got the, the landing gear there, which I wish they had moved further out, swapped the parking brake and landing gears over. That would have made more sense because parking brake, you're not really going to use that up in the air. So, of course, you can bind these how you like. You can have parking brake be the landing gear. We've got our flaps right on the outside. So this is a slightly thinner switch. I've seen some people have broken this, but mine's been fine. Um, yeah, my my quality... I can't really complain about it. Maybe some people are just a bit too enthusiastic with the switches. Lots of people were worried about the cable and that it would kink and it would break. I've had no issues whatsoever with it. And it, it really confused me that people freaked out about it. I think it's because you can see it. Any other throttle, this cable will be hidden in the shaft of the grip and it would still be doing the same thing. It would still be flexing and moving. You just couldn't see it. But we can see this because we can detach this to change the grips if we want to. But yeah, there's a little bit more slack if you want to pull that through, but honestly, don't worry about it. I use this plenty. Touch wood, had no issues. We've also got the friction adjustment there. So some people have got it out of the box and said it was broken. They can't move the throttle levers. Well, that's all they needed to do was release the friction, get it set. You don't want it too loose, otherwise it's not going to hold the throttle setting that you want you've got that adjustment there and the tools are supplied in the box. So I've got the, the finger lift kit installed. You don't have to have it, uh, but you might be wondering, you know, how does that affect other games that I play like Elite Dangerous? Well, if I go to the idle position, that's actually zero throttle in Elite Dangerous. I don't need to use the finger lift to come back. Coming back is actually hitting the hidden button inside the base. So that's zero throttle. Once I come forward, hit the next detent, which is military power, I'm still over 50% throttle. In Elite Dangerous, you, you live around 50% for maneuverability. But when you want to use super cruise, you need to max the engines out. And I don't want to keep finger lifting over forwards and backwards. So I just bound this button to go full speed ahead. So I found that a reasonable workaround because I didn't want to be removing the finger lift kit just to play Elite Dangerous. So that's worked out quite well for me. There is an adjustment on the finger lift, a mechanical adjustment, as well as a software adjustment in the software. So if you went to military power and then your afterburner kicked in on the Tomcat, you can adjust it in the Simap Pro software. And then for a different aircraft like the F-16, you can just tinker them around to make sure it's working as it should. Some people are saying that their finger lift broke. I'm assuming that they tightened this up way too much. Remember, it's only plastic 
and they're probably quite enthusiastic slamming into the detents uh, so that's probably why there's snapped so I use this plenty and mine's absolutely fine I did have a little bit of a squeak when using the finger lift and just using a little bit of lube uh, that stops the squeaking noise so now you know what else do we need to talk about oh, I've got the grips so we've got this spring returning switch there and people are saying that's quite sharp that is actually a valid complaint uh, all I'd say is, you know, play the guitar, you'll get calluses on your fingertips, it won't bother you. Or just buy a glove, you know, get one for golf, that's for your left hand, if it's, your fingertips are extra sensitive and it annoys you. It's a, it's a fine line between being able to manipulate it, you know, getting good grip on it, and it being uncomfortable. So, I kind of get people's complaint, but it doesn't bother me too much. So, we've said that they're a split throttle. You can link them. We've got the latch there. Got to get them lined up, which is incredibly hard for me to do with just the one hand. But yeah, you're not going to be constantly doing it. You're deciding you either want it locked because you've got an aircraft with one engine, or you want two engines separate. It's it's really up to you. So yeah, there's. I'm interested in the F15 grips because of the rumble motor and the extra inputs I don't know that I'd bother trying to swap to the F16 because that has a whole other mount to the side rather than the finger lift that would be quite involved to you know, keep swapping the grips over so try and pick a grip that's going to be as versatile as possible and that looks like it's going to be the F15 EX I don't see many people buying the F18 grips unless you specifically want the replica grip because you fly that aircraft all the time but honestly you want as many buttons as possible and you will find uses for them. You don't want to be short on buttons. So just trying to think if there was any other complaints people had about it or questions. Yeah, we've got our slew sensor there, like a mini joystick you find on the gamepad. That's super smooth. That still works well. I've got no jitter on it. Use that a lot. So in Elite Dangerous, that's my thrusters to go up and down and strafe left and right works quite well so yeah I think that covers most of it if you have questions feel free to post them in the comments and I'll answer them best I can we'll leave the video there have a great day have a great evening whatever you choose to do after watching this and as always I shall see you I want to see you next ciao for now